Hey, we're on our way down to Beverly Hills for BlueCon 2.0. On this special episode, we've got a keynote from Martin Scorsese, a first-hand look at Panasonic's 3D HD TV technology, and will streaming video be replacing Blu-ray anytime soon? All that plus the Blu-ray releases for the week of November 10th, 2009. This is HD Nation. Do you have a favorite Martin Scorsese film? I'm ashamed to say what Martin Scorsese films I have not seen. However, I will say that my first HD experience with a disc format was watching Goodfellas, and that was that was a phenomenal intro to the whole field of HD video. It set a very, very high bar. The opening scene from that is a spectacular high-def experience. Martin Scorsese has a lot to say, obviously, about film restoration. It's a great passion. He's also a film collector from back in the days when he was basically grabbing reels wherever he could get them. But let's hear what the man has to say about home theater and where Blu-ray fits into it. I was wondering if you could uh, maybe start out and comment a little bit on the how the, the change in the home video technology has affected you, you know, your collecting sensibilities. Well, um, uh, first of all, uh, at this point, all the studios have really gone through a very, very strong uh, change for the better and a transition uh, in presenting films on home video. In, in the old days, uh, when there was, uh, first of all, there was no dream of ever having a film at home, um, it, I guess the only way, being obsessed with films, the only way to sort of try to possess a film was to buy the poster if you could afford it at the time. Um, then eventually, um, uh, eventually, the video cassette was created. Um, this was a remarkable thing because you can actually have uh, actually have a, a collection, uh, like, like a collection of your favorite books, um, of the films that you like. Of course, the video cassette was very limited in its, um, its technical, um, technical um, uh, aspects, so that in a way, y y you were glad at least to see it on video cassette. You could see it at home. Screens weren't as big then, too, but um, it was the only alternative to uh, trying to catch the film again um, at a repertory cinema. There were still repertory cinemas in the 70s uh, in New York and Los Angeles and around the country, so you could probably get to see. The problem with repertory cinemas at the time was that the films were getting, the prints were getting older. So what you saw, you see it on a big screen, but you may see excerpts from, you know, <laughs> excerpts from the shortened version of Once Upon a Time in the West, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. Right. Um, and the only thing available for the video cassette on that, I think, was a cropped version. Um, but part of that, you know, was a, a limitation in technology. Mm -hmm. But um, even on DVD, when DVD first came out, um, there was a sort of confusion with um, um, aspect ratio. For example, a, ma a major title like Bonnie and Clyde, I think, was first released uh, full screen. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, and I, I do think, you, you remember, I think that there oh, yeah. were yes. confusions with uh, 185, which is a normal spherical widescreen, right. um, not anamorphic, um, and I thought they, they, they maybe considered releasing it full screen 133 was, uh, was good enough, but um, I really don't think it was. Um, and anyway, now the, the potential of the Blu-ray to replicate the original theatrical experience of seeing a film um, is so far this is the best format that I, I have uh, and I've been through 40 years of this so <laughs> uh, the quality the higher resolution of the high definition mastering um, and really the support now of the extraordinary teams at the studios mm -hmm. uh, behind these remasterings mm -hmm. Blu-ray now offers the ability to see the film as close as it was meant to be um, there's a it has a film grain texture, in a way, um, which is very, very important to replicating theatrical experience. And I, I think it's impossible, obviously, to recreate completely um, the experience of watching a film in a movie theater. Yet, I really firmly believe that Blu-ray is as close as you're going to get to reliving that experience. How do you feel about the ability that we have now to alter classic films from their original formats for something like Blu-ray? Well, I mean, there's always, I feel, that what's really important is to present the films the original format, uh, the proper, the right aspect ratio size of the screen, as best as you can get to the color, the original uh, version of the color that, that the cinematographer is still available, that sort of thing, the sound. Um, but I, I took advantage of um, 
the capabilities that were offered by, by these new technologies. Um, that I probably didn't have at the time, and this was text Taxi Driver, uh, because it turned out that uh, Bernard Herrmann recorded the score of the film in stereo. But at that time, I mean, that type of picture was just not being released in stereo. Um, it was mono, and it was mixed mono. We mixed it in five days, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we a wonderful original stereo score. And for the um, um, original uh, version of the DVD. Um, uh, we created a new score, I mean, we created a new soundtrack mm -hmm. that I super helped supervise mm -hmm. of the stereo music um, balanced with the dialogue track. But here's the thing, um, when I went in to check uh, on the, uh, on the uh, um, transition uh, to this new, um, this new um, format, um, I found that the dialogue was hid 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 hidden behind in my ear, mm -hmm. to my ear, the dialogue was hidden behind the music. Mm -hmm. So that was the key thing. It brought all the dialogue back to the center track mm -hmm. and brought it up front. I remember doing that. Sure. Uh, so that I felt that it was balanced properly. I mean, I feel if you're going to do that and you're going to present it a certain way and people are now used to sound in their homes, uh, I'm even used to it, the sound comes left, right, behind you and that sort of thing. For a classic film that, that is not necessarily exactly how it was done, but if you also have available the original mono track mm -hmm. on the DVD, on the Blu-ray, I mean, this is, for me, this is something that's totally valid. We also have to remember that many films were released in what was called, do you remember, um, there were stereo, ver there were versions of stereo back um, uh, 40, 50 years ago, Correct. maybe more. Correct. Um, certainly when I was a film goer back in the late 40s, early 50s, Prospector Sound. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah. That was called Made in Prospecta Sound. And also the, the, very, the very early uh, stereo tracks, which still exist in many of the classic films, where you know, you, your person comes in the right of frame, you hear them on the right of frame. The person goes across the frame, you see them go, hear them going across the frame, out the left. You know, sure. it's very crude and everything, but it was stereo. It was stereo. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, you know, if we can enhance that a little bit, to make that smoother on a, mm -hmm. on a Blu-ray, mm -hmm. it's totally valid. I mean, musicals like A Star Is Born and uh, there, there so many others um, mm -hmm. had that had that stereo had those stereo tracks. But Prospectus Sound goes all the way back to I think in the 40s, if I'm not mistaken, I may be wrong there. But pictures like Shane, I think, was in Prospectus Sound and mm -hmm. many others. Do you have a favorite movie that you watch on Blu-ray? One that you watch over and over again? Um, and for someone who has thousands of films in their collection, I imagine that would be difficult to come up with. It is hard. It is hard. I, mean, I like the Searchers. Searchers. Uh, the Blu-ray of that is quite beautiful. Yeah. It's quite beautiful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's one of those things. The Blu-ray makes it so... You know, don't forget that film was shot in Vista Vision. Correct. And the Blu-ray of that picture... Um, uh, it, there's something about it when you just put it on just to check it out. Mm -hmm. You can't take it off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just keeps. There's something about the beauty of the landscape and the nature of the faces, and the uh, uh, the elegy that it is. Um, mm -hmm. John Ford's work uh, that still holds up and it's still very moving. Mm -hmm. There are others too, but th that's the one that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. I'd like to, to to thank you for taking the time out of your schedule today to join us here today, and we really appreciate you and, and what you had to say. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Let me tell you something, Martin Scorsese was so amazing. Our, 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 basically, one of our producers, Serafina, with a broken rib, her ribs stopped hurting after he spoke. <laughs> now, you probably don't know the gentleman who was interviewing Martin Scorsese. He is Grover Crisp, and the reason you might be curious about him is he deals with archival restoration at Sony, which means he, he has the keys to one of the greatest collections of movies out there, and he is responsible for turning them into amazing Blu-rays.